Hey guys, welcome to Project Build. Today we're going to be looking at changing the oil pan on a Smart 451. So this car here, which I picked up a little while ago and I'm just giving it a refresh before I uh, turn around and sell it, um, had a really bad oil leak and I noticed that the problem was the drain plug on the oil pan had stripped the threads out of the oil pan and it was leaking oil all over the place. We can have a look at that. So if we have a look in here, you can see there's just oil all over the back of the motor here and all over the oil pan. You can see I've already removed the drain plug. It was very loose and just kind of pulled out anyways. But um, you can see it's been losing oil for quite a long time. Uh, so today we're gonna get in there and change that oil pan. Now, I'm very lucky I have a spare motor here that I had gotten out of a parts car. So I've got the whole, I saved the whole cradle and everything before I sent most of the car to scrap. And I've already gone ahead and removed my oil pan from it. So just a couple of things that I wanna look at real quick before we get into actually changing the oil pan on the car is I wanna show you guys just a couple of things on this pan. Um, first of all, I wanna show you guys, there's a couple of bolts here that hold the AC compressor on. There's actually a third bolt that um, screws into the block up here. So we're gonna to have to undo those three to take the AC compressor off. And then there's two bolts over here that hold coolant pipes to the oil pan. They bolt to this oil pan here. Now, these are gonna be really tough to get at um, because there's an engine support uh, bracket, like a motor mount bracket that sits right there. So now that we have the oil pan out, it's easy to see that uh, here. But when we get under the car, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult, but at least you guys have an idea looking at this right now. Okay, so now that we're under the motor here, we can see how tight everything is and how difficult it's gonna to be to get at everything. What I'm hoping, and I've never done one of these before, but what I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to do is remove this dog bone here and then lower the front of the motor just a bit and try to get enough clearance so that I can get in. And in particularly, I think what's gonna be difficult to get at is the two bolts that are holding those coolant lines on. Um, I think it should be fairly easy to remove these bolts that are holding the AC compressor to the oil pan, but if I can get those coolant line bolts out, um, I think the bolts for the pan itself are going to be not too tricky to get at. So I'm gonna start by pulling uh, the two bolts out of this dog bone. I'm gonna take both out so I can take the whole dog bone out and just gain a bunch of clearance and hopefully uh, a little bit better access there. So I've got my jack holding the motor up here and then tools, I've got an E20 external Torx and an 18 mil wrench here to get those bolts out. Now with that motor mount out of the way, you can see I've got a lot more clearance already to be able to get in here at my hardware that I need to get out, but I'm going to lower my jack here just a little bit. So that dog bone actually had quite a bit less weight on it than I thought. Um, obviously it's just stabilizing the motor and not actually supporting the weight of it very much. So now I can move the motor a little bit more freely. I can definitely get a little bit better access to my hardware up here. Um, but first, before I try and get at that, I'm actually just going to try and clean things up a little bit um, so I don't have rust falling in my eyes the whole time. So I know it's tough to see, but right up in here, we have a look. You can see there's a bolt right here, and it's got a 10 millimeter head, and that's one of the two bolts that hold these coolant pipes on. You can see this one's between two coolant pipes. There's a coolant pipe there, and there's another one on the other side here. So this bolt right there, I need to pull out in order to be able to pull that oil pan off. Now that other bolt is just up in here. You can see it just up here, okay? So we're gonna try and get that bolt as well. That's another 10 millimeter head on that bolt. So we need to pull that guy off to be able to remove this big coolant pipe that's over here.
Okay, guys, I gave it a try. Um, all I could do on those two bolts was get a flat, like a box end wrench on it with a 12 point head. And all I was gonna do was um, round the heads of those bolts off. So instead of trying to keep do that, doing that, I'll, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to loosen or remove these bolts for the subframe, lower the whole cradle a little bit, and then that should give me access to the top of the motor where I can remove the intake manifold and get out those two bolts and then undo the rest of the bolts around the edge of the oil pan and get the whole thing off. So a bit of extra work that way, but it's the way she goes. So you can see here, I've got the rear bolts a little bit longer and the front bolts a little bit shorter. I'm actually gonna just throw the rear bolt into the front spot and then I'm gonna use uh, some lowering bolts that I have in the rear and that'll allow me to not drop the subframe so much that I have to worry about the electrical and the brake line connections on the other side and I don't have to worry about the handbrake uh, getting messed up. So I'm gonna just drop the cradle here as little as possible, just enough to get in and do the work on top that I need to get at. Okay, now we're into uh, our super disgusting engine bay here. You can see I've made a little bit of space for myself up here right by the firewall. I can get in if I was doing an alternator. Uh, it's easy to get at. I've got a bit of space here so that I'll be able to maneuver this intake manifold out. And I didn't lower the subframe very much at all just to get that little bit of clearance. It's a little bit lower at the front than at the back. And the reason for that is I didn't want to undo the rear bumper because actually if you look here, there's a support for the rear bumper that's attached to that subframe. So if you try and lower that too much, you're likely to rip your bumper apart and I didn't want to take that all apart so I just kept that pretty high in the back a little bit lower in the front almost onto the bolt and like you can see there I've got quite a bit more space to work with. So now that we've got that set up I'm going to start by removing this uh, intake pipe and the air cleaner cover. Uh, pull that air filter out as well just to give myself a little bit of space here and then uh, I'm going to have to remove the fuel injector rail and fuel injectors. And then there's a set of bolts just here at the intake manifold, undo those and undo a couple of electrical connections. And then that whole assembly should be able to be removed fairly easily, I think. <laughs> Welcome back guys to the never ending saga that is removing this oil pan. Um, as you can see, this car is pretty rusty and it's giving me a lot of grief. I ended up having to drop the subframe and motor uh, onto my long uh, service position bolts there. So I've got everything really low, which I was trying to avoid, but I couldn't in the end. Um, I had to remove the intake manifold. So I had to pull this guy completely off, which was a pain in the ass. Uh, the bolts that hold it on aren't too bad, but there's hose connections and electrical connectors that are clipped into this thing all the way around and it was quite difficult to get it out a lot of time spent there unfortunately so now i can get under the car undo all the bolts holding that oil pan on and finally after many hours pull that oil pan off
there we go, finally off. It's amazing how much oil is still in the pan, despite the fact that that drain plug's been out of there for a couple of weeks since I started to pull the, mo pull the uh, oil off. You can see that one bolt here that was, that I had to grind the head off. That whole pan's quite disgusting, just from that oil leak over the years. Now, hopefully you guys didn't have that struggle to get the pan off. And if you got your new pan ready to go on, or in my case, the used pan, um, all you need to do now is apply a little thin layer of sealant all the way around. I'm going to use some Moto Seal. Uh, you can use Honda Bond, Yamabon, you know, Permatex uh, Black. There's all, all kinds of products that'll do the job. The only thing I want to say is uh, don't apply a huge amount of sealant to your surface here because I've taken motors apart um, fairly often and a few times what I'll see is guys that apply like a huge amount of sealant to that surface what happens when you tighten that up you get big blobs of sealant on the inside of the oil pan and then they fall off get uh, sucked into the into the oil pickup and then block the screen on that oil pickup you get oil starvation and then cook your motor so be especially careful around the oil passage here as well with your sealant because if you um, put too much on here and you get a blob that ends up falling off on the inside of this passage, that's after the pickup screen, which is your drain plug. And it's going to get pulled into the oil pump and end up uh, blocking oil passages in the motor. So uh, when you're doing this whole surface, you know, very light with the sealant, you just need enough uh, to form a little bit of a gasket between the pan and the motor because there's no paper gasket that goes on here. And that's it. And that's all you need. I did, forgot to mention before I started to apply this that it is a good idea to uh, clean that whole surface. So I had cleaned it with a gasket scraper first and then um, just a, a really soft abrasive uh, just to remove everything and then I gave it a wipe down with brake cleaner make sure that surface was good and clean so this will stick really well I'm gonna let this just flash for a second while I clean off uh, the block the engine block and I did want to mention that I added a little bit of extra ma material over here because both oil pans that I removed um, had a little bit of a gap here it seems that at this end of the oil pan the way the block is like there's a little uh, plate that doesn't mate super perfectly like the the bottom edge of it's not super flush with the rest of the rest of the block there so there was a little bit more gasket material here on the pan that i took off which means there's a bit bigger of a gap there when everything's tightened down so i added a little bit extra as you can see there was some goop already up that passage a little bit now, right here where I have obviously this O-ring, I'm going to uh, actually pull that guy off and make sure I don't damage it while I'm cleaning up this gasket surface here. Now I'm lucky because I had the drain plug out of this uh, quite a long time ago. The motor's been, or the car's been sitting here half apart for about a week. So a lot of the oils uh, come down out of the motor. If you're trying to do this in a weekend and you've driven the car in and you're driving, driving the car back out, um, there's a good chance you're gonna have oil that's still coming down from the walls of the, of the block and ending up on your surface here. So you have to be quick uh, between when you clean that and uh, get your oil pan in place with the sealant so that you don't get oil in between or you, so that you don't have a film of oil on this surface before you get your oil pan on. Now I've applied just a super super thin layer of sealant to that o-ring before putting it on because I am reusing the o-ring. Ideally I would have liked to have a new o-ring. I don't have one handy so we're stuck having to reuse the same one. So I'm just putting this t very light coating of sealant to it to make sure that it sticks. Uh, 
I'm just trying to get the oil pan positioned properly so I can get all my bolts in and then I'm gonna have them all in uh, finger tight and then go around and torque everything down. All right, now I've got uh, all my bolts tightened down and all the bolts are in. I can see a little bit of sealant coming out around the edges of my oil pan, so I know that it should be pretty uh, well sealed up. All there would be left to do had I not had the issues with the coolant pipe bolts and had to dis dismantle half the car here uh, would be to reinstall those couple of bolts that are holding the coolant lines down, that one steel clamp and the bolt over here, and then the bolt over here that's holding that plastic um, little housing, I guess, for the for the coolant line, and I would be done. I'd be able to fill my oil up after the sealant is set a little bit and drive away. But in my particular case, I've got quite a bit of car left to assemble, um, but that should be it for changing your oil pan. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you wanna see more smart car tech videos like this, Make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll see you later.